Swimsuit? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Phone charger? Check. Don't forget to pack the 5-Hour Energy. It fits great in a pocket or carry-on, and the alert feeling will help you arrive ready for anything. Now get 20% off when you use code 5HETRAVEL at 5HourEnergy.com. Expires April 30th. One-time use only. Not valid with other discounts. Remember, visit 5HourEnergy.com and use code 5HETRAVEL to save 20%. Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. In a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions, only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers Podcast. Wow, wow, wow. What's the deal, Panther fans? It's Tony Dunn with the C3 Panthers Podcast, bringing you another episode of the longest-running Panthers Podcast. Tonight, we've got Jadavion Clowney signed as a Carolina Panther. Kind of seems like old news at this point, but it happened right after our show last week. Did you know he's recruiting Stephon Gilmore as hard as he can? The Panthers got a new linebacker in Tay Davis. Sam Franklin, that dog returns, and your cat calls at 252-228-5098 to chop up the latest Panthers news and opinions from the fan perspective. I do it each and every week with my wheel, man. What's up, Cody Light? Up, oh, mute, mute, mute. Yeah, I'm doing the Tony tonight, having audio yeah. issues. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, listen, there's no way I'd rather be on a Tuesday night than sitting here with my boys talking Panther football. It's a little bit of a slow moment right now. We're sort of in the build-up to the draft, and we're getting ready to gear our content around that. We're going to be looking at some receivers pretty soon, some defensive players. But, uh, man, tonight is going to be a defensive show. We've rounded out the defense. We've given Ajiro Averro some more weapons to use this season, and we're going to talk about how this defense will stack up in 2024 and we're going to do it with the best damn Panther fans and all of you, too. My boy, Anthony. My boy, D's Ill Skills, the brand ambassador, Charlotte Move, Damian Tucker, David Screws, Doug Reader, Kristen Delane, Jay at My Life, My Story, and the Real C3AP. Tony Dunn, and nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. Smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, jump in the chat, uh, and hang out with uh, the voice that makes a voice. What's up, CK? You know, just out here living dreams, um, just trying to get through this off season and to uh, Panthers relevance again. But as of now, man, just happy to be here with everybody in the chat. My boys, uh, minus one, just starting to miss Greg a little more as time goes on. Hopefully we'll get him back on sooner rather than later. But man, just happy to be here with everybody. Uh, shout out to Panther Pickle. I think I saw that it was his birthday. If that's so, happy birthday. Uh, and uh, shut, the hell up! shut the hell up. Also, Panther you a Pickle. dog. You a dog. And uh, uh, these guys are doing happy tremendous. Happy birthday, Pickle. We appreciate you, brother. Um, so much thanks to those guys uh, from him to uh, Colby to these ills and all the people that are uh, running the spaces and really just taking ownership of the C3 Panthers podcast, man. I love that uh, because it's uh, weeks like this that we need you. We need your energy. We need your chat. We need your discussion. What do you guys want to talk about it? The names, uh, the numbers 252-228-5098. My life, my story. I'd love to hang out uh, and have a drink and talk some football with you, man. Just right down the road. Guys, let's go ahead and jump in tonight's show. But before we do, uh, we got to remind you guys, North Carolina, that sports gambling is legal. Uh, Bet365 is sponsoring the show this month. Bet365 is offering new users $200 in bonus bets this month. To receive your bonus bets, all you have to do is sign up for Bet365 using our link. It's in the show description. First deposit of $10. Uh and a $5 wager on any game. Once that $5 bet settles, you'll receive $200 in bonus bets, even if you lose the bet. To be eligible for this sign-up bonus, you must sign up through our link, bit.ly slash 365. You can use 
uh, that QR code on the screen right now by using our link. Not only do you receive the $200 in bonus bets, but you will be directly supporting the podcast. You can find our link in the episode description or by scanning that QR code. So if you haven't signed up for Bet365, click our link, bit.ly slash 365 and place that first bet. That's bit.ly forward slash C365. Offer is only available for new customers who are physically present in North Carolina. Be sure to gamble responsibly. And I tell you, this is, uh, man, that sports gambling could be tough. Uh, March Madness was difficult on Tony. Uh, but the Cubs up seven nothing, seven nothing, got me covering right now on a small little wager that I placed tonight's show. The Carolina Panthers signed Jadavian Clowney as free agency slows. Probably the slower news week that we've had. We're kind of blessed in the idea that we got a new coach and the GM, and so we had some things that filled the news cycle even when things were dead. But really, as we were kind of looking for tonight's show, whatever to talk about, it's basically Jadavion Clowney, and that's it. Jadavion Clowney with his, let me see how many teams this makes. One, two, three, four, five. This is his sixth stop. Uh, 31 years old. The Carolina Panthers signed him to a two-year deal. And uh, pretty needed at this point uh, because it was – I don't even know who we had on the defensive front other than Derek Brown. So Jadavion Clowney here, um, White Chocolate Espresso, very happy about this. Yeah, listen, we needed this, dude. When you trade away, trade away Brian Burns, you are now admitting that you have no pass rush or you have no one that you can depend on for a consistent pass rush. We know that's not the role that Derek Brown plays. Um, maybe you're excited about Caleb on chase on or EJ one them. And I think there's reason to be, but at the end of the day, you needed someone who was going to be able to move the needle a little bit more than that. And you needed someone like Jadavion Clowney and it's a homecoming. And yeah, you're damn right. I'm wearing my Clemson shirt, man. Clowney might be a Panther, but I'm still a tiger boy. Let's go. Uh, but you know what? I think he can do some damage here in Carolina. And um, I think a uh, shout out to Tillis and all the boys in the front office, because I really think they've been signing some good deals here and putting us on contracts that aren't going to harm us for the foreseeable future. I'm, I'm fairly, uh, fairly impressed so far. Uh, Jadavion Clowney has never had over 10 sacks or more than nine and a half sacks in a season. CK uh, been big right. name coming out of college, right? Like uh, that, Julius Peppers esque type player, um, just a freak. Remember that high, that college hit he put on? I think a Michigan player where it knocked his head off. The yep. helmet's still rolling. Uh, I think he got hurt his first year because it said he started two games and that's it. Has never been other than only one season, two seasons in his about a ten year career where he's on, where he's played the entire year. Your thoughts on the Carolina Panthers uh, signing Jadavion Clowney? I mean, I was surprised that we got a two-year deal out of it. Um, I was also surprised by the fact that uh, that it was somewhat of a team-friendly deal on top of it all. Um, so, I mean, I, like I said, I'm ultimately I'm not upset with it. Um, the things that I think that are interesting about it are his decision to sign so quickly. It feels yeah. like outside of the norm. Um, and the fact that he signed more than a one year deal, uh, he had, uh, he had done a couple of more than one year deals previously, but for the most part, he's been pretty, you know, consistent on signing the one year deals with the teams that he's been on. So, um, and I may be misremembering that, but, uh, that's, that's just my recollection of his history and free agency. So. Well, you know, I think there are some, uh, added circumstances. This first he's from, uh, I guess Rock Hill, South Carolina, um, and, you know, he was, I think, disgusted. I read that his maybe his grandfather passed away last year or was having some illness. His grandmother's getting older and his foundation is here. And so this is, you know, a way for him to kind of get back home, uh, you know, to where he probably wants to plant uh, at least his long term presence instead of flying back and forth from uh, New York or whatever. I mean, do you be. think that's a good thing or a bad thing? 
that basically people come to Carolina when they have family here and they're on the latter end of their career. Like, are we the retirement home of the NFL? I feel like that's kind of what we're starting to feel like. Well, I mean, I think uh, for some players, I mean, like a Julius Peppers, right, makes sense um, to come back. I don't know if we've had a ton of those old players that have just come back to just be at home, right? I mean, we always try to make those connections and be like, oh, this kid went to South Carolina. I mean, he went to Charlotte. Yeah. He did this. And everyone's but- already doing that. He, uh, he's, you know, he's a Carolina product. Everybody's talking about, uh, you know, him and – uh, someone else that he claims to want to bring here is Stefan Gilmore, two guys who went to the same high school. So there really does seem to be this Carolina connection reunion thing kind of happening that he kind of fits nicely into. It, but it makes sense for that. him right now. It makes sense for him in this part of his career. I don't know if we've, um, and, you know, this makes sense for a lot of people, right? It makes sense for us. Uh, the need was there. Clowney showed um, kind of a rejuvenation over the last, I guess, two years. I think sure. he's had a total. Well, no, only the last year. Again, he he had a down year in Cleveland two years ago with only two sacks. But, you know, he's been a nine sack guy consistently when he plays most of the season. Uh, but the Panthers needed somebody, and they couldn't go into the season without having somebody that has experience. And Clowney, I think, fits this defense pretty well, athletic enough to play outside linebacker, uh, big and strong enough to play on a front in a 3-4. So, I mean, it is, I don't know. I'm not jumping for joy. Like, all of a sudden, this is going to make the team awesome. Uh, but probably a necessary signing. And I think I'd feel the same way if Stefan Gilmore signed with the team. It's not that like all of a sudden I'm going, oh, this defense is going to be great. It's just, man, you got to have some players on the team that can play and having players that have experience with a little gas in the tank hopefully is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, hey, is that this is like uh, CK said, I mean, the worst that's going to happen is you pay – 18 million for him for one year, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, and in 2024, in 2024, we're paying six million, uh, in total. That goes up to 14 million in 2025. And again, this is a band aid type of thing. And I would even go as far as to say, uh, I don't think this precludes us from looking at an edge rusher in the draft. Uh, finding a guy for a more long-term type of position, I think that would definitely behoove the Panthers at some point. Um, but I, you know, he's long in the tooth, and Tony also he is, but he's only at, thirty-one, right? But also looking at Justin Houston last year, who was thirty-two and was better in a three-four. You know, uh, all the things that we're saying about him now, uh, we're just kind of hoping that it's true this time around. And uh, also someone who played for the Ravens that had a bunch of pass rushers before. So, you know, I think a lot of fans are wondering what kind of Jadeveon Clowney we're going to be getting with this signing. One common thing I have noticed is that uh, people are excited about his ability to stop the run. Yeah. Which, is, yeah. which has been something that we have struggled at immensely uh, for the past few He's- years in a row. He's been a good all he's a good all around player. Uh kind of hard to live up to the bill. And I want to shout out my boy Sean from Takeoff Fitness, uh, my personal trainer. Um, if you're here in Greenville, North Carolina, check out Takeoff Fitness. But also he does virtual training too. He does these great virtual workouts and I'll coach you along the way. Uh so hit up Takeoff Fitness. You can find him in the chat, Sean Takeoff Fit. Thanks for tuning in, Sean. Uh struggling from today. Worked hard today. Still sweating, I feel like. Uh, You're right, Clowney, though. I mean, look, is Clowney is one of those players that the hype is so big around him that it was going to be difficult to live up to him. He always has had injuries. Uh, But at the same time, he's been productive wherever he goes. He's been decent. Yeah, I think yeah. the difference for me and uh, the whatever the Houston guy was, whatever his first name was, I almost said Sam Houston. Uh, Justin Houston. Justin Houston. 
Well, first, I don't think I got tremendously excited about Justin Houston last year in retrospect. I think it was just like, oh, we're adding more, adding more, adding more. I'm not tremendously excited about uh, Clowney like that. He's going to be a world beater here or solve everything. I just feel like it was a needed move, a needed position. And Clowney had his better, one of his better years. So if we could just get, look, if he could come in and be a six to nine sack guy and be pretty, pretty good against the run. um, I think that look is that that's about what we expect out of him. So uh, I'm not, look, it's like anybody. I'm not tremendously excited about anything on this Panthers team. I'm excited for the opportunity. Are we predicting him to have uh, more or less? What's your over under since we're talking about betting in North Carolina? Mm. What's your over under on, uh, let's say, eight sacks for Jadavion Clowney? Under. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's safe to take under. Chat. Over under Jadavion Clowney, it sacks. I mean, that's the safe one to take, you know. I mean, um, he's only he's never had more than nine and a half. So again, um, not tremendously jumping for joy. I think it's nice to have a name that people recognize. It would be great if he could have a little resurgence. I think um you know, I mean, hey, is look, is I think the pa- uh, the Panthers, every player and every uh, position is, group is just able to exceed our expectations because we don't have any. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of unders. Uh, James Island Panthers says under. Flame for Jesus says under. Uh, Doug Near says under. Uh, so I mean, but here's the thing: if he's getting eight eight and a half sacks and the Panthers ranked the last in the NFL last year in total sacks, are we going to be worse this next year uh, in, in the pass rush department than we were this year? Like, what, where is it? Uh, are we hoping that, that DJ won or that EJ won them? I think it's DJ. I think it's uh, DJ. I thought it was EJ. I think it's DJ. I'll look it up. DJ. Pardon me. With DJ, DJ, fucking whatever, dude. Okay. If these Wanna two dudes... Are, are these two dudes going to be an actual formidable one-two punch on the edge for the Panthers? No. You're also depending on Derek Brown and A. Sean Robinson being very disruptive in the middle, too. So it's kind of no, like... No, but like last year's productivity was so low that even if they are bad, it's going to be the numbers of last year. Right. You know, I mean, last year's numbers were were horrific. I mean, like 30 some sacks. Yeah, and the Panthers were last in pressure, pardon yeah. me, not sacks, but still How pretty could, bad. Who could man. have been behind us in sacks? I want to uh, know what team that was. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's not like we were good uh, rushing the I think the we pass. were last in sacks. I can't. That's be, what uh, I thought. That's I, what I I'm thought. I'm pretty sure. I thought that we were the last in pressures and last in sacks. I'm pretty sure we were last. In we were the worst team that. getting to the quarterback of any defense. Yeah, and which, uh, that's why I don't think is like it. Uh, but I also want to be cautious because I said there's no way but w- nowhere but up yeah. after Matt Rule. Well, I saw a lot of people, too. Uh, what now the win total is four and a half. You know, um, yeah, well, let's talk about the rest of the signings and then we'll talk about the defense as a whole. So not some huge names here, but some familiar ones. Uh, we signed more depth at the linebacker position by signing Tay Davis uh, onto the Panther squad. Also a familiar face, Sam Franklin Jr. Back for the Panthers. Uh, so uh, again, in retrospect, looking at all of these signings, what do you expect for the Panthers' defense in 2024? They retain the Giro Averro to try and get some kind of continuity from one year to another, but there's a lot of rotating pieces from one year to the next. And, Tony, I don't know if you can say that any of the defensive players that we signed have that superstar factor to them. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. So, but I mean, Clowney and easy. Brown and Robinson are the three best defensive players. Maybe the Jewel guy is going to be a pleasant surprise, rack up a bunch of tackles. 
My ex first, I'm glad to have Sam Franklin, special team specialist and uh, kind of just all around good player, a uh, hard player, plays hard. Um, again, I don't think I, I really feel like uh, the Panthers hedge their bets on the off, uh, not on the offense, but in just trying to develop Bryce Young this year. I think yeah. the defense is just kind of kind of meander on um, and look a lot like last year's defense did. And now there's an opportunity for us to pick up maybe a, a starting linebacker in the draft in the second round. You do that helps this defense a little bit. Uh, you know, that might be some cuts later on. Uh, I'm a little worried about that secondary though. Not a little, a lot, a lot worried about that secondary. You know, you're hoping maybe JC Horn can come out and then surprise you and be healthy. Uh, I'm not betting on this Panthers defense. I didn't think they were good last year. And I probably think that the Panthers are just trying to eke by this year and hope that they can find some development in Bryce Young. That's a hundred percent what they're doing. I don't think that that's even like, uh, I don't even think it's that all that controversial. Um, I don't think that we're looking to try to be, uh, I mean, I'm not, if we're successful, it's a happy accident. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you're going to just try to be uh, decent. Yeah. Decent on defense. I don't think that the identity for the team is going to come from the defense. Um, I think the identity of this team is going to come from that big hog molly offensive line and trying to get Bryce Young cooking. But I just hope that these coaches come in here and really try to piss these players off. And what I mean by that is put that chip on their shoulder, man. Be like, they don't expect shit from y'all in 2024. The Panthers have been the laughing stock of the NFL. It's time to show that you're on something, boys. Like, I, I, we really need that underdog mentality. You know, we joke around about Dan Morgan finding dogs. But there really is some truth to that. Like, we need those guys that you want to go to war with. Like, say what you want about Frankie Louvu and whether we should have kept him or not. That guy was a monster. And that guy was always doing things to try and amp up our defense and, you know, really try and be a leader. And I don't know who that's going to be on the defense this year. We've lost so many veterans, right? You did lose a Jeremy Chen. You did lose a Brian Burns. You did lose uh, a Dante Jackson. So you're really going to have to light a fire under these guys' ass to really get them playing as a cohesive unit and in any way to be better than 2023, they're going to have to have that. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, I think if anything we get out of anybody this season is going to be a pleasant surprise for me. i um, coming in with low expectations. Um, and not that I expect them to roll over and just be terrible, but look, right. is that this is not a town, ta- you know, and the sad part about this, to be honest, is that the Panthers just four years ago put eight picks into the defense in one draft. And we have no talent on this team. Think of that. Is think of how wild and bananas that is, is that the Panthers said radically went radical in trying to overhaul their defense and get younger and make it more athletic and get better and all of this jazz invested two two top 10 picks in the defense um you know JC Horn has been a, has been difficult for us is that, that you know that shows you what happens when you kind of miss on a first round pick the first round picks is kind of like with fantasy man is it's not about always getting the best player in the first right. round it's just about not missing uh and You know, uh, look, whatever you want to say about J.C. Horn and how great he is when he's on the field, he just hasn't been on the field very much. So I hope that he has a, you know, if he has a a year where he plays the full year and we see what J.C. Horn can really be, that will help this defense a lot, Cody. And that'll be your dog. Yeah, But I'm not really banking on I didn't think the defense was any good last year. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, no, I I hear you. I'm I'm definitely hoping... Go ahead. I was going to say, it's good to have the cohesiveness that you're going to have with Ivero being able to build on this defense and, you know, a year of having this defense built around uh, what his system is intended to be as opposed to essentially trying to fit, fit round holes into square pegs um, or square pegs into round holes, rather. So uh, that'll be good. But again, you know, 
even the maintaining of Ivero isn't enough to make me feel like this is a needle mover. Yeah, and look, is that to be honest though, is that if you like the idea of Evero being such a awesome defensive mind, the best or one of the best in the league and whatever, is he wasn't banging the table to keep Jeremy Chen. He obviously wasn't banging the no. table to sign Brian. He wasn't Burke, yeah. he was barely playing him yeah. last season. Yeah, he like, had uh, the opportunity. So like that's why I don't feel like I'm not here to tout that the defense is going to be good. But again, it's like, I thought the defense was a pleasant surprise last year. And, uh, and we've, we've argued a lot about if it was fool's gold, which I and CK, CK and I both believe. But I think is that, I mean, we were, it was clear that the defense still was the better unit on the team out of all the units. Um, so, you know, is that that's what you're hoping is that Evero can just get a lot, get a lot of juice from the squeeze from these guys and get us through a year. And then you go and sign a big free agent and you, you know, knock somebody out in the draft this year and start building the team. Yeah. So it's that's it. Lot, lots of moving parts, man. Uh, again, I, no Panther fan really thinks that this team right now is, I mean, maybe the super optimistic people do. But I feel like most fans still think this is a four, maybe five win team at most. Uh, it's going to take a lot to get everyone believing that something good can happen here. And you made that well, point that we're going all in uh, on offense this year, which, by the way, I wholeheartedly approve of. Like, I'm on record saying, like, if we're going to lose, Dude, at least score some fucking points. Well, we just now need to learn about Bryce Young in the process. That's the most important right. part is that this if you're going to win six games versus four games, who really gives a shit, right? You need to learn about your team. You need to learn about the players and how to get from four and six wins to eight and ten wins the following year. Um, I think this is, look, you never know. I mean, like Panthers come out and be – you know, Bryce Young could cook his second year. You know, you could get some stuff going. You can have a young, enthusiastic coach. I mean, it's just a question of do you – it's not whether they can turn out to be a more than a five-win team. It's just is it is it reasonable to, to bet on it, right? And last year, I think we saw uh, what happens when you just – bet with your heart rather than just what you're thinking is that the Panthers set too much. We had so high of expectations and they fell so far short. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of a bizarre, we're in a weird, I'm like in purgatory when it comes to the Panthers. I'm not upset. I feel like last year was the most demoralizing season I've ever had as a Panther. Yeah, fan. It's been a rough stretch, man. I think everybody's trying to, you know, <laughs> Fight the good fight and, and you know be a good fan, uh, but it's definitely been rough. Uh, we're gonna have to start looking to the draft here, man. And uh, these receivers and some of these players, like that's that's what there is to look forward to. Like this is the next part of Dan Morgan proving himself to be the type of GM that he thinks he is. Can he nail a draft without a first round pick? And that's gonna be a big deal for him. Yeah, um, um, we're going to need it. And how about that is how crazy is it that you are void of a lot of talent? You don't have a first round pick. So you're going to have to yeah. try to land somebody at 33. Find that those diamonds in the rough. To be a first round pick. Yeah. And hey, shout out to James Island Panther with the 199. Says anything more than four or five wins would be a plus. I mean, yeah, I agree. Listen, when, when you're two and 15 or 16 or whatever, it's hard to go anywhere but up. Uh, from that point in time, man. Uh, tell me, uh, you want to you want to take some calls? Yeah, I want to shout out uh, D- Diesel Skills uh, brand ambassador. Thank you for uh, your support. Like he said, you can join the C three Legion. Uh, really, a cool thing that was started organically by um by fans or or member. I don't even like to call them fans of the show because uh they're we're family. You know, it's not us talking to you guys. It's talking with you. Uh, but people start putting C3 in their username on Twitter, and it's pretty neat to see the Legion growing. Uh, this is YouTube your show. As well, man, C3 Legion, baby. We are Legion. Um, 
Yeah, well, we only got two calls right now. So if you want to get in right now, now's the time. Let's go ahead and take some cat calls. The number is 252-228-5098. So what are your thoughts on cat calling? Yeah, it's pretty You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think cat calling makes the person feel? It feels two, good. Like and a three and a four and a four. Who's that cat sitting in the back corner with his face buried in his nose? Who's that kid that can use one? What's up, C3? It's Anthony from Charlotte. OVL boys are having a good Tuesday. Uh, just got a quick break from class here. Thought I'd call in to get my thoughts on uh, a couple More of updates. Uh, first off, OVL boys had an happy Easter. Um, and, um, yeah, so we got them, boys. We got Genevieve on Clowney. Um, I like how he signed a two-year deal. Um, I, I'm hoping he, he wants to finish his career here. I think we need a serious... Um, veteran player that's not looking for um you know that settled down that got a good contract You're saying we need a... actually willing to help Dog. younger Dog. develop um i know it's crazy to think that yeah we're probably going to need to draft another edge rusher and we still don't know what we have in in barno or dj johnson those guys barely played last year um it'd be awesome to see if he can help develop those guys Cloud, he's a great run stuffer, um, and uh, he's coming up one of his best sack seasons. So I think he still has a lot left in the tank. Um, I think another reason that um, they went after him was he fits what a Jiro Evero wants to do. I don't think – I think when a, um, Evero has players that fit what he wants to do and he understands the strength of what they're good at, he's not going to have them like – he's not going to have him playing um, – coverage that's not who Jadavion is um I think that's why they went after Jewel I, I think uh because you saw that Frankie and Frankie's not good in co- not that good in coverage and Shaq went down he had to switch a lot of things up um but I don't think that I think that's not going to be the case this year and then um you know we got the draft coming up and I'm not I'm just going to say this and harp on it as much as I can up until the draft I don't care what position uh, we take of if it's the best player available, you got to take them because they can't overthink this. Like we just came off a two and 15 season. We need all the best available talent we can get. And I don't think we're in the, that uh, boat of like, Hey, we need this. Well, guess what? We need a lot of positions. So I think um, we, I think they're going to take the best player available. Um, another thing um, I'm, Deontay Johnson seems to be really uh, liking all these Panther accounts talking about Bryce Young. I, I hope him and Bryce Young can build a connection. Um, I still believe in Bryce Young. Um, I'm excited, man. And this season, I think we're we're gonna answer. We're gonna get answers to a lot of questions about who Bryce Young really is as a football player. Um, those are my thoughts. Keep pounding. Um, and uh, let's get an extension done with Derek Robinson. Uh, yeah, found me. Thanks for the call, Anthony. And then I got a question for you based off of that, Tony, when you're done. Uh, shout out to KG73. He's one of my oldest friends in life. Um, Cubs fan, right, as well? Cubs up 7 nothing. two men on, bottom of the six. Pulling me in a little loot on uh, you can get to your uh, – on that bet in action on bet 365. You can check that bit.ly link in the description. And, uh Yeah. Um, what you got for me? So, well, one first. Oh, I got one thing too. After this, even even at a at a time where things are fairly dead, man, we're rocking one hundred and twenty five viewers on YouTube. Oh man, that's we appreciate the shit out of y'all. And guys, we are less than a hundred subscribers away from three run home run thousand subscribers, y'all. It's bigger than a three run home run. Oh yeah. We're close to 6,000 subscribers. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification. How many more we got to get? Uh, I think we need like 80 more. 80? Yeah, 80, 80 something, something along there. And uh, and we'll get to 6,000 subscribers. We appreciate y'all. Dude, we're doing Panther content year round. Uh, but Tony, my, uh, my question to you based off of that is, do you feel like the Panthers are setting up to go best player available? 
Because even though that sounds fancy and good in theory, like, oh, you take the best player, whatever. I think after the context of last year and how bad Bryce Young looked in that offense, you've done so much in upgrading the offensive line with two guards, um, two big time guards that were rated very highly in pass protection. My question to you is, do you go best player available if that ends up being a corner or a linebacker or whatever it might be? Or is it a necessity that the Panthers must come away with a wide receiver with one of their first two second round picks, either at 33 or 39? And the reason why I ask you this, Tony, we've been doing a Friday free for all mock draft every Friday. By the way, check us out. You can join every Friday at 7 p.m. But collectively, we do a mock draft. And the last one, we went with a center and a linebacker at 33 and 39. And we actually waited until later uh, to draft that wide receiver. And let me tell you, people on Twitter, uh, let us know about it. They had their fun. They put their fun. Everyone right now is under the mindset that especially if Xavier Worthy is available or Adonai Mitchell, that you have to draft a wide receiver with one of these two picks. Is that the truth? Or can the Panthers actually draft best player available? No, it's absolutely not the truth that you have to draft a wide receiver here. Is that, look, is that talk, uh, and look, watch all the people that are dra- that are talking wide receiver right now. They're doing 27,000 mock drafts. That's what they'll do. It's like mock draft 20.29 and all of this crap. First of all, is that the draft is such a fluid thing. It's so hard to predict what it's going to be like in the 30s. What players, what position groups are going to get runs and things like that. The other thing is, is that, of course, you want to pick a skill position player in a mock draft, right? It's like that is would be ridiculous for you to say, oh, well, let's pick a center, like which I'm with you. Why, Big Jordan? I'm fine with uh, us picking a center and all of this. I think that that is Internet armchair GMing that says you've got to pick a wide receiver now. Okay. If you believe, and I don't know enough about these guys, I'm not going to just get wowed and completely by the fourth one or whatever the guy wrote, four, two, one worthy. Like, yeah, that's cool that he ran real fast. Right. I mean, like, but if you really believe that one of these guys is a game changing wide receiver or a really good one, I don't, I mean, and you want to draft them with best player available, do it. But I don't think you should be backed into a corner trying to draft a player who's a rookie on a team with a rookie quarter with a rookie coach first year with a quarterback. I mean, like really is the odds of that actually working out are probably less than anything. I think you go in there with the mindset of we're going to do whatever we can to make our team better today. And if that is getting you a skill position player, then do it. But But I don't think you should be backed into it. Like Dave Gettleman said, You use free agency to set up the draft. And right now with Deontay Johnson, and look, as you guys can write off uh, Jonathan Mingo all you want, uh, but nothing was good on that team last year. So So it's not like I'm not ready to write him out of the league just yet. The Panthers also made him a starter from day one, Cody Lack, and he wasn't ready for that. Right, but ask yourself this, though. So we know that we need Jonathan Mingo to step it up and and have a big time Uh, sophomore season, Uh, but what does your wide receiver room look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have Deontay Johnson. Now you have have Jonathan Mingo. You have Adam Thielen, who we pretty much believe is uh, coming back, you know? But, like, is that that really enough? Like, I feel like there isn't that one – I guess it just depends on if you think Deontay Johnson is number one wide receiver. Yes, he is. Potential. I see. I don't know that. Yet. He and is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the denying the talent, but I don't know that he has X wide receiver written all over him. Like, I don't know that you're going to be able to line him up everywhere 
and expect uh, him to be Terrence able to get Marshall open. Jr., baby. You got Amir smith Marset. Look, here's the thing is that you can't fix everything in one season. Right. I mean, you're just not going to be able to fix every position group in one season. So I think the fact that you go out and get Deontay Johnson for nothing, basically, is like we upgraded the wide receiver group. You're not all of a sudden going to be able. We don't have a top 10 pick. It's not like you're going to just get a wide receiver that's immediately going to step in. Now, there have been examples of younger wide younger players making a difference. I'm not saying they can't. But if that's just going to make you feel better about the offense that you drafted wide receiver there, then we should have felt better last year when we drafted Jonathan Domingo at the same fucking spot. I'm this like it's not going to make me any more or less confident in the overall strength of the group. It'll just make me optimistic about the future if you do that. So, like, I really give no shits about what position we draft. I just hope that the players that we get at 33 and 39 make um, make it on the field sooner than later. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, would you want to you want to jump in on this, or you want to do some more calls? What what you got? Let's do some more calls. I mean, I I I've, this is uh, who knows. <laughs> I, I got you. It hey, yeah. When it comes to the draft and all of this, and and look, is that look, just remember? Is look, I saw somebody and they put. And it was somebody who does like all the draft talk and all of this crap. And there was somebody related to the Panthers. I wish I could remember their name. Maybe it was Norris Thurnborg Thurnborg or Thurnberg or something like that. Sound familiar? Um, And his like his top, it was like, here's what I'd be really happy about. Here's what I'd be second happy about here. And they were all wide receivers. They were all wide receivers. And like, I just feel like when you lock yourself into that, you're just so living in the present roster. And that is a very short term view to me, you know, and look, is that the Panthers have a ton of fucking needs, dude. So if you draft a corner and he's just as good as a wide receiver, like a start wide receiver there, then we should be happy. You know, what we just need is to whoever we get at 33 to really turn out in a redraft to be a top 15 pick. That's what you need. It doesn't matter what position. All right, let's take another call. Yo, my C3 family. D. What up, D? Yo, shout out to the great Tony Dunn, to the homie Cody Lack, to CK Cody. Shut the hell up, Panther Pickle. That effing guy, Muscles Marinara. The great Kristen Ladane, D. Skill. That boy, Kobe, Jake the Snake. Hey, I love every single one of y'all, yo. Uh, I had just wanted to say, like, one, I'm still excited. We got, like, three weeks to the draft or whatever. Get, like, the little kid during the holidays when you get out for Christmas break and you're waiting for Christmas or whatever so we can discuss and talk. It, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm just ready to, to see what dogs we're going to acquire, and then these dogs start practicing, and then these dogs get out here and start performing. But on another note, and I'm not going to take long with this, I want to shout out C3 Spaces, Panther Pickle, D's, Cole, Jake, all them. Because a couple of weeks ago, I got very bad in my inbox. I didn't bring no value to C3. They were leaving spaces when I got on and stuff. And for whatever reason, it really hit me in my head. I didn't want to really speak too much more. I didn't want to hurt the, the brand or whatever. But them guys showed me a lot of love. Man. Pretty much, I have a renewed spirit. So in that, thanks, these, thanks, Cole, thanks the whole space, as Evan, all y'all, y'all are beautiful, Mr. Stratz. I love every single one of y'all. But on that note, we about to get out there, throw them helmets on. We're going to get them dogs. We about to win games. We're going to be more positive. We're going to do better than last year. Not hard to do with just with two losses. But at the end of the day, we're going to get them dogs in, and we're going to keep pounding. Shout out to Jadavian Clowney going home, and you're going to bring Gilly back with you. And that's what I'm talking about, and we're going to go ahead and keep making them improvements to be a team of dogs. Keep pounding. Uh, somebody brought up this in the chat. Thank you, by the way, um, uh, D. Uh, we appreciate it, man. You are fantastic. And, man, we're glad that you found a home with C3, man. You are one of us. You family. 
Um, somebody put out this is that we don't have any wide receivers under contract after next year. Um, okay, I mean, you know, that is arguably a good reason to draft a wide receiver. You know, I mean, is that if you want to look at it contractually, again, you asked though, is like, what are we going to do? Um, in the, you know, there's going to be plenty of guys that you could, if you needed a body who had some experience, it was decent. That's going to not decent, but can play a little bit. It's going to get cut from a team or something out there to get by. I just don't think we need to be thinking about what is it going to take for us to be good today? I think that argument about the, contracts actually might be the most compelling one I've heard about drafting a receiver. The necessity of it is like the idea of building for the future rather than building for this year. Uh, let's take another call. What's up there, C3? This year's Xavier Leggett from the University of South Carolina. Whoa. If y'all don't draft me, y'all going to be motherfucking sorry. Cause I'm country, living it up. A so dang country, you ain't country enough. You sound too uh, city for Xavier Leggett. <laughs> you sound too urban. That was that urban cowboy. You don't right sound there. enough like Black Forest Gump. <laughs> Dude, he uh, does have a cool accent. Though. It's I wild. Like it. uh, I, I like it. As I get older, make- I have like a profundity for really cool accents that uh like sound really unique man i i like that shit i have been scarred by dumb receivers though and i don't want to say that just because <laughs> the way you but oh, that, that's a stereotype man it it's is, just an accent. but dwayne He's jarrett dumb. was dumb <laughs> dwayne jarrett was just straight dumb or somebody was like shrimp stew. Shrimp, oh god! Gumbo, I hope he's shrimp, good. Um, fine. I'm not. I'm not in love with any, but but you know, also as every year. You also part, don't know any of them. I don't yet. care. I don't care. Yeah, I'll get to know do. them after we draft. Care, yeah, them. I'll get but to know that, them after we draft. But them. but I feel like that's also um, coloring the conversation that we're having on. Well, do we have to go best player available, or can we draft a receiver? Because the conversation in this draft Why is... Why would you not go best player available? That just saying. seems like a stupid you, idea. What, uh, I'm trying to tell you why. There are so many good wide receivers in this draft that theoretically everyone might think, well, I might not need to take a wide receiver right now. We can let them fall down the board a little bit and get one later. Inevitably, that means pushing really good receivers down in the draft towards where Carolina is picking. That's a good thing for us. So right now, for example, Adonai Mitchell uh, out of Texas is looked at as a first-round kind of prospect that could theoretically fall to Carolina. That would be a big deal for us. That sounds like you are also talking best player available. Mm. If you're telling Players know, yeah. down because of other things that happened in the draft. Yeah. I'm fine. That's a good point. You know, I don't also, think that we go into this draft saying if we don't get a wide receiver in the second round, we don't have any fucking future. If somebody fought, no. that's why I say best player. Like if you get a guy that gets there and you're like, holy cow, we didn't expect Lad McConkey or Donnie Mitchell or whoever the fuck it was to to be here then draft them. But that's best player available to me. We have so many needs. First, I don't ever think you draft entirely best player available, right? There's like a weighted thing because you wouldn't draft a quarterback if you were in the top 10 and you had a quarterback, right? Like, so if you got a franchise quarterback, you're not going to go, oh, well, best player available is a quarterback. You're not going to do that. So there's a weighted concept to best player available. I just think the Panthers have so many needs when it comes to defensive front, when it comes to linebacker, when it comes to secondary, when it comes to wide receiver, when it comes to tight end, is that like to get locked in in a position group would be foolish. Yeah, I mean, there is the idea that the receiver could be best player available, uh, but it, it could also not be. It might be a center. It might be a corner, like a Nate Wiggins out of Clemson, who I would love. Uh, by the way, shout out to Vegas Panthers, Drew with the $5, it says, with so many C3 fan members bitching about wide receiver separation, we better be looking for one in the second round. That's what I'm saying, Tony. Yes, that would even mean Lad McConkey. And Tony, this is what I think you're not getting, right? When last year was so bad offensively, 
And now the mission is so clearly to evaluate Bryce Young under proper context. It would be uh, almost a crime if we didn't go through every measure available to put talent around him. So if there isn't a Donai Mitchell or an Xavier Leggett available, but you might be able to make the argument for another center being there that we should draft or another linebacker, it's incumbent upon the Panthers to put as much talent around Bryce Young in a short amount of time, which is what they didn't do a good job of with Cam Newton. You have to do that for Bryce when you have the opportunity All right, hold on. to do so. Look, is that they tried to do it for Cam Newton. They just weren't good at it. They went out and got Kelvin Benjamin. They got Devin Funches. They tried to get big. They tried to do all these different things. Well, I I think I am getting it, uh, Cody. I understand the need. Well, I think you guys, I think a lot of people at this time of year get too transfixed on the idea that rookie players automatically come in and become difference makers. I think that that's actually less common than it is more. I think last year you had three wide receivers that we heard their names a lot, and it was a cool year particularly for a year we didn't think it was a great wide receiver class. And all of a sudden you had three wide receivers that were pretty uh, influential in their rookie seasons. I just think this is that if you're going to say, Oh my God, we're going to get him weapons and you get him a receiver in the second round. That's like, okay. I mean, that's not like really giving him great weapons. That's hoping that that person becomes a weapon. That's hoping, you know I mean? They got to learn the game. They got to learn a lot of stuff. Yeah, but think- so how many other second round or second round wide receivers have come into the NFL and blown shit up and been really how many good have not, dude? And I can tell you a long list of Carolina yeah, Panther ones that have it from man. Wayne Jett, wide receiver, to Brandon and I, to I have told you this before. Wide receivers in today's age are coming out more prepared than ever before. This is true for quarterbacks and it's true for wide receivers. When you have these guys that are doing seven on sevens from the time they're in sixth grade, they have ideas of NFL route concepts and all those types of things. It's not a surprise to see wide receivers. I mean, look at Puka Nakua last year who came that's in. That's such believe, a fucking, that's, that's, a that's like the most crazy. I think it would be better no, saying this. Not. It's you would true. probably be better that saying Elijah Moore. Elijah receiver. Moore was picked 34 for the Jets in 2021. But if you go down the list of all the other players, Rondell Moore in the second round, uh, I can't tell you. Terrace Marshall Jr., a second rounder. Justin Jefferson. Okay. Justin Jefferson was what year was he? Dra- was he a round pick. Or no, but oh. he might have been late. No, he was late for ah, He was a first. So yeah, I just think that's your <laughs> idea <laughs> that this is so common, that this is so common, I think is too much. All right. So let's go to the 2022 draft and let's find a wide receiver. Do you ever, do you, does anybody know who Christian Watson is? Nope. North Dakota state. He was t- taken number 34. How about, uh, Wandell Robinson. Nope. Don't know who the fuck that is. John. None of those guys. None of those George Pickens. George Pickens. Sky Moore. Trey. uh, Coming out this year. There were different. That was not even a good wide receiver. Okay. Then let's go to 2023. We'll go to 2023. Actually, that was last year. That's the probably the one that had the best. Uh, And by the way. Uh, Jaden Reed, number 50. Don't know who the fuck that is. Are you counting um, down all the receivers? Jonathan Mango. Yeah, I'm just looking at wide receivers in the second round. I'm wide more rec- talking about rookie wide receivers that make an impact every single I'm talking year. second even round. If like, it, even if it's not the second round, the Panthers yeah, absolutely have to draft a wide receiver at some You're point. acting like that it's they grow. Uh, hey, McCole Hardman, second round. Not every rounder. draft is not JJ, every draft. Uh, a Sargi same. wide side, second not, round. Paris not Campbell. Not every draft is built the same. Paris Andy Campbell. Right. Okay. No, but look, I'm, I've given you four drafts right now. We'll go back 2018. Well, here, second round picks. Yeah, you said Watson. Watson's been good for the uh Cortland the Sutton. That's a good one. Cortland Sutton. Oh, that's just nine, years, seven years ago. I just think that you are acting like it's too, 
that it's more frequent than it truly is. I'm I'm saying that it doesn't have to be this thing that is rare. Like that you should Well, it is. It no, is rare. The, the idea that, that you're going to draft a second round wide receiver and that you just shouldn't expect anything from him is flawed. Jonathan I'm not saying Ingo you shouldn't expect it, but you can't bank Jonathan on it. Mango was terribly disappointing last year, especially considering how. how about, let's talk about Terrace Marshall Jr. Smith Fuck Jonathan up. Mango. We traded no, up for Terrace yeah, Marshall yeah, Jr. And Steve Smith spent the better part of an offseason saying that he was the best wide receiver for the Panthers to pick in the second round. It's like when you pick the wrong player, it sets you back. And sure, you, sure. They, Agreed. They do time. I just think that it's cherry picking to think that a lot of these, that there's just stars all the time out there and we just haven't hit on them is like, yes, that oh, is well, we true. Other teams them. have, but it you're talking true. about a pool of 31 other teams and you're looking at their entire draft history. But you're also judging every class by the same standard. Like it's the same caliber of wide receivers available. Okay, well then guess it what? Then there's twelve true, starters. Though. It just okay. isn't true though. But this then we should draft them at thirty three. Who cares what else? What other positions are out there? One of the better wide receiver drafts in, in the past few years. Most analysts agree. All so, right, read off these super chats. We got two of them. Dear Ross with the five dollars says maybe fans are stuck on the idea that we need to draft a wide receiver high because we've been terrible at drafting. Uh, in mid to late rounds in general. This is very true. You're very true. The higher you pick, I feel like the 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 better chance that we are going to find someone true, true. worthwhile rather than taking whatever receiver is available in the fifth or sixth round. Sure, uh, another, I agree with that. I don't think you yeah. should pass on a wide receiver just because. Sure. I think you just shouldn't feel handcuffed and forced into the idea of picking one. So uh, another five dollars from Nirvash. He says I did the research. Musin Muhammad was the only great wide receiver the Panthers picked in round two in franchise history. Oh yeah, we've had a terrible run. Uh, again, you don't want to uh, be ha- you know. Uh, C- Cody always gets mad at me because I'll be like, oh, you can't draft a wide receiver from USC, and be like, you don't. It's not the hat. It's the player and stuff like that. But. Uh, we just haven't had a uh, as an organization. We haven't had any luck finding a second wide receiver. That's the thing is the Panthers have never had two wide receivers at the same time, other than Steve Smith and Masai Muhammad. Nah, I can't remember a time. Oh, I guess you could say Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore, but and you know what, that Tony, wasn't the same. Something else that we have to consider into this is Jonathan Mingo. Is that he was so disappointing to a lot of people last year? and missing assignments and lazy routes that people just have so little faith in him that they're not even counting him as like, oh, yeah, that's a real dependable weapon for the Panthers going into 2024. Like, no one is thinking of him that way. So, well, they should but believe, they also, you know what? Right. Is that, that's why uh, people want to draft a wide receiver. It's fine. It's fine to want to draft one, and it's fine to draft one. I just don't think you feel like you have to be at 33 if you don't and get one. I feel one like the Panthers know out. that, too. I feel like the Panthers know that there is incredible pressure on them to get another offensive weapon. I don't give a fuck. End, you know what? Weapon. If they've been to, uh, to public pressure, then they're not they're – not, uh, qualified to do their jobs. Like you can't let that noise. You can't right. let that. You can be aware of the noise, but you can't let the noise guide your decision. You have to do what you truly believe is right. And again, I'm not saying you shouldn't draft a wide receiver in the second round. I'm just saying this is that it's too needs based to say that that's the only thing to do. Now, if it is such a good draft and somebody who is what you believe to be a top tier talent falls to that position, then you better draft him. Let's take the next call, see what you guys got to say. What's up, Panther people? It's Christian. Figured I'd uh, give you guys a call. There's only two calls. So I want to talk about this five receiver shit. This is starting to fucking tickle my funny bone. I'm getting a little pissy over here in Arizona because, again, it's all fucking media related. Sorry, I get a little pissy. But come on, man. We went through this shit last year with fucking Bryce Young. And now here, the media fucking pundits are saying we, quote, unquote, need a wide receiver. 
Let me fucking refresh everyone's memory, for fucking Christ's sake. We have Mingo, spent a second round pick on him. We have Thielen, had a great fucking year. We traded for fucking Johnson. Awesome. We have Amir smith Marshad, who's an up-and-comer. We have some fucking depth there. Now, now look at the cornerback roster. You have Horn. Is he going to fucking play? I don't know. Nobody knows because he has a history of not being available. And who else? You have the guy from Buffalo. I'm sorry. I didn't even know this fucker. You have Troy Hill. Okay, there's some promise here. Boodle? I don't, dude, I never even thought. Apparently he did well. I watched every game. He didn't stand out to me. Uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. But I just, for anyone to say that you need a wide receiver and they're not even talking about cornerback, I'm dumbfounded. With that said, if we go wide receiver, fine. I'm of the mind that we're probably going to find a way to sign Gilmore. <laughs> I'd be shocked. Well, I'd be a little shocked if we don't. In which case, fine. We don't maybe need a, a cornerback as much. But look at fucking center, okay? I would love a center. I think they're going to go to two defensive picks in the second round, you know, barring whether or not we sign Gilmore. But they're, they're, you're telling me that we don't need a center more than we need a receiver? You have Corbett, who – I mean, shit, what are they going to fucking will not on a wheelchair over there? Just, just snap the ball, bro. Uh, then you have, who else? Brady Christian? Okay, maybe he could play center. But the point is there's questions there. I don't see nearly as many questions at receiver. The best argument someone could make for me, if they actually said it, was that the talent at wide receiver in this class is just too big, too much to pass up. Okay, great. But if it's so good, why can't I wait till the third round? I don't know, maybe fourth round. Anyway, guys, have fun. I'm done. I scratch that itch. Good night. I uh, actually appreciate you, bro. You actually have 49 more seconds to go. God damn it. I'm not fucking done. Look at linebacker. You have Shaq, Shaq Thompson, who's practically fucking retired. Just make him a fucking assistant coach already. A guy from fucking Denver who, you know, maybe he'll do well, but you lose Luvu. Who else is there? A fucking linebacker. And you're looking at Peyton, goddamn motherfucking. He's going to be a fucking hero, Wilson. Right, just sitting right there, dude. He's basically just fucking, just give him a fucking Panther helmet already. He's going to be a beast. And he wants he to play Jeff. for this team. I can't emphasize enough how much, maybe we just, just, just give us a fucking guy who wants to fucking play. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm, shit, I'm sure I'm forgetting other shit. I'll, I'll shut up for now. Christian, we appreciate you. And, and listen, I think you're, point of view is echoed by a lot of people. I think Tony agrees with you. I think a lot of people agree with you. I did want to echo uh, one thing in the chat. Uh, Sid says the middle guy's clueless about Mango. Look, dude, if you have hope about Jonathan Mango, fine. Don't let me tell you different, man. I hope he does break out in the next year. But to pretend like Jonathan Mango was anything other than subpar last year, dude, that is ridiculous, man. The dude had lazy route running, no blocking, giving up on routes, which got Bryce into trouble, got the old line into trouble. Like, dude, I hope he turns it on just as much as the next person. But let, let's be real about what we saw. Jonathan Mingo, compared to where he was drafted, was painfully underwhelming. Well, how about this is, and and look, we this is not a defend Mingo moment for me. We did Mingo Bingo, and it was a disaster. Um, it was a disaster. But here is to co contextualize some of the Mingo stuff is number one is tell me one player on this team that wasn't disappointing last year. Yeah, man. No, but, no, straight up, straight up. Any, I mean, you, you even like talk about that. No, look, the number one, pass, no, the number one draft pick overall, people argue was disappointing. So, look, the other thing is Mingo, to show you how dysfunctional this team was from the beginning, was handed the starting position from day one. He was made a starter. Him, it was the three that they started, listed in the starting lineup with Thielen, Chark. And Mingo, they, you know, like if you want, uh, 
to me, I think there was so, and I'm not saying that you should count on Mingo this year. I don't think, I think that would be foolish to believe. That's my only point. I just think this is to throw the baby out entirely with the bathwater. But no one's doing that though. No one's throwing throwing out the baby with the bathwater. What I'm doing is saying that you can't blame someone for not depending on Jonathan Mingo going into oh, this totally. season. I think it would like, be foolish like to do. Oh, Jonathan Mingo. Oh, we're not. Turn That's on. why you ain't got He's Deontay gonna, Johnson. No, you're not. No, you're not. But there's a lot of Panther fans, and I see them in the chat room. They're like, oh, Lubin's a, I mean, uh, Mingo's a beast. He can do this and that. Listen, if he can, great. I want him to more than anyone else. But I'm saying let's not pretend like last year – he was anything other than underwhelming compared to where he was drafted at. When, the, the fact of the matter that people don't want to admit, when but you're we a second, say that about so when, many when players. You he's said that about a boy that you fucking used to slob his that, knob at Terrace point. Marshall Jr. That's my you point. If to, you're a second, if you're a second round pick, it is reasonable for fans to have a certain amount of expectations for your rookie season. If you fall short, that's fine. Your career is not over. But no one can say that you can depend on Jonathan Mingo going into this year. I think the larger part of the story is just how poorly last year's draft class contributed overall to the whole team. When well, it comes that, from that's Mingo the, to that's Johnson to Jan- years, really, yeah, and that's the to really that's the the story here. CK is not an individual player, but we've had players that right now have have garnered such little optimism that you don't even care if they're on the team. Right. No, I mean, that's, but yeah, when we think about our offense, uh, I don't think there was a single outside of, you know, the, the investment we have in Bryce, there's not a single person that on this offense that you would have said, man, I'm, I wish that guy was back next year. I can't wait to see what he's able to do next year. You I know, don't even I, know if there's a single player on the team other than Derek Brown. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's such a vicious cycle. Every year, whenever we try to be, or whenever I try to be a realist about the Panthers, we get the people that are like, oh, you're a bad Panther fan. You don't believe in No, but I don't think they're saying that. I think you're being defensive about every that. Year. We get shit on every okay. year. And then everyone's like, oh, man, we were believing our own hype. I think you're being so defensive like, no, about we're, this, we're, is that is all it, you man? can do is draft a wide receiver. I think you're it with the – and look. That's uh, not that. I okay. mean, I, I want, I want I touchdowns. Argue, I want touchdowns. I want touchdowns. And well, guess what? A second-round fucking wide receiver is arguably not going to give you that many. Um, I mean, it's – Possible. Again, I mean, you can Hopefully even make that argument for a, you can make that argument for a first round wide receiver. I mean, go back and look at the wide receivers drafted in the first round and tell me when the last one was that you felt like, oh my God, this guy made an impact his rookie year. You know, I mean, it's not as look. This is what draft people do at this time of year, right? And I mean, look, and you know, and here the best argument, like the caller even said is that if this is such a deep wide receiver class that you probably, you might be able to get a first round talent in the second round. I like that. That's how you can convince me to get a wide receiver at 33 or 39, not by telling me we only need weapons. We only need weapons. Like that's, that's not the argument that I want. The argument is, is that the best player available is a wide receiver. Make that argument for me. Oh, shout out to Joey the Blind Panther dropping bars in the chat. Says a second round wide receiver definitely isn't going to give you touchdowns if you don't draft him. Yeah. I agree with you, dude. And uh, shout out to pay, to the Vegas Panthers. Drew says people blindly defend Bryce saying he was a rookie but talk mad shit about Mingo who was also a rookie who can't cry for one and ruthlessly trash the other. Now that I agree with. And by the way, I think both of them uh, did not look great last year. I Whatever think you want to also put, put on, a lot on Mango. Uh, I, I think that yes, is I understand that you that your first and second round picks should be cons- should ideally be immediate contributors, but they just handed them the keys right away. 
And we saw it. We saw Terrace Marshall Jr. Nobody even talking to him. They just said this is they knew exactly that they were going to trot out Chark, Thielen, and Mango from the day other, one. The other part here is I don't think there's a single person on the panel here or even in the chat that is saying, let's release Mingo. Right. There's not a single person that has this mindset that Mingo doesn't have the potential to be good, that he was drafted in the second round for a reason. Right. At the end of the day, he has that potential. But the decision to not go with the wide receiver in this draft because we have Mingo is is that's an unrealistic expectation. Right. Mingo didn't show anything last year that made us feel like he was going to be the guy. Can he? Sure, I'm optimistic that he has the ability to show some stuff, but the idea of moving forward without getting a guy that could be the number one guy, uh, allowing this offense, uh, this uh, this coaching staff, and this new general manager, uh, you know, front office to be able to make the decision on who they think is actually a pos- you know, going to be a positive impact on this team, I think is is why we have to. It would honestly be malpractice to not go with a uh, a rookie wide receiver this year. Um, while still keeping the yes. hopes alive for Jonathan Mingo. He, I want him uh, to do that. But he did not do a lot of great things. Hank, I cannot say Hank, that. Did. Hank he did not is do right. a lot of great things. I watched that same tape, and it was, it was almost problematic, the, the lack of effort he had in his route running. It was, it was noticeable early and throughout the entirety of the season. You cannot tell me you watched his tape and said that he did a lot of great things. You really cannot. He, yes, right. he was. Some a rookie. of that has to do with coaching oh, too. I'm like none of the players Ooh. look fundamentally sound from Icky up the. So, and again, not trying to give him a pass. Now, Hank Three Rebel is uh, is right. Is the problem is Mango is ideally suited for the slot, but Adam Thielen can only play the slot. So then that becomes a problem. All right. Um, all right, let's take another call. You guys cover me on this one real quick. Yo, yo, yo. It looks like Chocolate Espresso. I'm listening to the podcast right now. We're going to watch Chocolate. Are we talking about what we need or who should we take? Listen, there is nobody on this team that has experience playing center in the NFL. No one. Austin Corbett never played. We have no center. Corbett did. Literally. Including Oh, no. I think it's obvious. 33 is, is a center. And I think it's Frazier out of West Virginia. Or the Oregon guy, if he falls. But there's no way you do not take a center and with, those, with one of those second-round picks. Like, you need, we need somebody. Somebody's got to know how to play the goddamn position. Like, I honestly feel like we're going to take a receiver past the third round. Like, to me, I like Tays Washington out, out of uh, USC. He's projecting like in the fifth or sixth. He was actually Caleb Williams, like number one receiver. Like a lot of people don't understand. He was the number one receiver, but because he's like kind of small, nobody wants to take him. But he's, yeah, to me, I think he's the guy we should target when it comes to receivers. Um, we, we still need a linebacker. And I, to me, nobody's talking about corner. Like we're going to get Gilmore. Okay. I, I agree. Gilmore's old, so is Troy Hill. And I love I love meeting some horn now, you know, coming from South Carolina fan now. He's been hurt. So what happens if Horn goes down with an injury and Gilmore and Troy Hill retire? What are we gonna do at corner position? Yeah. Like we definitely need a corner too. And to me I'm I'm going corner linebacker. I mean sorry. I'm going center linebacker corner and then I'm you know if take I'll take a receiver or something like that. I mean look but man definitely uh, gotta take it early. Got to have it and then the thirty three. Everything else can be BPA, honestly. Because team won two teams. They just team only won two games. So those are my options. Peace. Uh, peace. Uh, look so I I hear your point that you're making, Kev, and that a lot of people are making. CK, we do need another corner. Like, we lost CJ Henderson and Dante Jackson. That's the truth. The Panthers need another corner. Yeah. And, 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 and in fact, if you were to ask me, like, what is the most important position of need? 
in the draft right now, like I'd probably put corner at the top of that list. And number one, if I'm being honest, yeah. So I understand if you say, man, we have to draft a corner right there. I get that. And to everyone saying, I don't trust Austin Corbett playing center. We need to draft a center. Fine. Linebacker. I hear you. I, I really like the tape of Peyton Wilson and uh, the guy from Texas a and as well. But it's hard for me to say that wide receiver falls below all of those positions. That it ranks number four. I'm sorry, man. I, I I'm not. Maybe I'm. We're not in a position to, to draft group think on or whatever. Need, a wide receiver has to be added to this offense, man. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it it just does. CK, you said the same thing a minute ago. I know we're not wanting to just make our opinions based off of optics. And for me, it's not about optics. We need to have a number one wide receiver type of talent. And what I mean by that is someone who is big, tall, fast, and can go up and high point the football. Someone that's good on those slant routes across the middle. I think that's important, man. And I'm not saying a wide receiver is number one on the most important position of need for the Panthers, but it's damn sure not number four like Kev was implying. All right. Oh, I agree. Let's take another call. What's up, C3? Uh, just wanted to call back in and kind of talk about this wide receiver discussion. So I get where Cody's coming from and the fact that the uh, vision is clear. We need to evaluate Bryce Young. And trust me, I want to draft a wide receiver too. But there are so many holes on this roster that it's like whoever they have rated as the best player available, I want them to take. I don't care if that's a wide receiver. That's cool. I don't care if that's a center because you have so many holes that you're not going to be able to fill everything this year. And this goes back to something that I've been pushing this whole off season. I've been saying that if the need for wide receiver is so big, then we should, we should have still been in these, you know, Brandon IU talks or like a T Higgins talk where it's like, yeah, that player who's already proven you, you're going to have to pay him but you're going to have to pay a wide, good wide receiver anyways. You're going to have to pay Deontay Johnson if he balls out, et cetera. So the money thing, I didn't understand there, but it's like if you're so worried about taking a wide receiver and hoping that it's also the best player available, well, then you could have made a splash and gotten one of those big guys because they would have been the best player available no matter what because they're already proven talent and their their payday is up. They're looking for a big contract. So th- those are my thoughts on that. But I, I just kind of listened to Christian's call, and a lot of what he's saying is true. It's like the team's main issue still is depth. We have a lot of, like, everyone saying, oh, we filled most of the holes, which I think, yeah, the starters, I think we filled some, are some, there's some um, decent starters that filled the holes. But again, guys, what has been our major major flaw when it comes to this roster over the last couple of years when players go down with injury amen we have no depth no depth like we saw what happened when the cornerback room looked like when we don't have uh jc horn in 2022 like yeah i get i think we should should still sign stefan gilmore but i i also don't know i mean i think he had a solid season this past year I don't know if that's just enough to not want me to take like a Nate Wiggins at pick 33 uh, center. I agree. Austin Corbett hasn't played a single NFL snap of center. He's only played in training camp and preseason. So I don't really think we can trust the guy coming off, you know, two major leg uh, injuries and surgeries. Or Christensen. Just Christensen's play a new position like that. Like these are things that they're going to have to figure out themselves. I get, and then the Mingo thing. I still think he could be a solid player and I get where Cody's coming from and the fact that he was very disappointing, but you never know what he could be in, in this offense. Those are my quick thoughts. I think we have a great first, great call, Anthony. Um, one of my favorites of the night. I think this is my entire argument is that not that you shouldn't take a wide receiver, but that you shouldn't feel compelled to only take positions based on need. I don't want to take a center only because we need one. I want to take a player that you believe that you're getting a great value at there. 
I do think having to pick 39, though, gives us a lot of luxury in not having to feel like, hey, man, we're not going to have another pick for 30 more picks. Well, so then you can take the players you believe in rather than going, oh, well, we like this guy and he's not going to be there at 58, so we got to take him now. So, Tony, let's let's talk about this. We're definitely not going to be able to be off the hook for our draft show. No, uh, we're doing the draft. The, oh, I know, but I'm saying I think, and this is just a prediction, I feel like maybe as time goes on, even if it's just some rumors and some blowing smoke to stir the pot, I think you're going to start to hear rumors that if the Panthers like any one of these players specifically, that maybe they could use those two to go and get their guy. And it depends I on that idea. It depends on who they value I on if they idea. believe a guy is there. And also, but again, these franchises, they covet that fifth year option. They really do. And if you feel like you have a guy that you think is going to be, uh, you know, that you want to bet on that you think is going to be a really meaningful contributor uh, for the foreseeable future, then go get your guy. And by the way, I'm not even saying that has to be a wide receiver. Let's say it's the center that you love, or let's say it's a Nate Wiggins, the corner out of Clemson. If you don't end up signing um, Stephon Gilmore, which we haven't even talked about yet, but I think the Panthers could very easily decide if we have a player that we love, we have the ammunition to move up a little bit to grab him and get that for your option. I don't like that. Don't I that think that, no, I think there's just person. too many. I think, well, look, I don't want to debate it too much. I'm just saying this is that this team, I think that's short sighted. That's short sighted thinking. And I think that if you want this team all of a sudden to be good in a year, then yeah, that's what you do. I think this team wants to pleasantly surprise you this year, be pretty good next year. And then in year three, have Bryce just fucking balling out and a head coach that's got three, two years under his belt. Uh, so I'm not in favor of that. I'm not saying that it can't happen. We will be doing the draft show. You might as well put up the draft hat. How about this is the first year. Yeah. We're not going to see a player put on a hat in the first round, arguably Yeah, we don't it's know the best draft hat that we've had in forever. It's a pretty sweet yeah, hat. Like they this. got it right this year. I like it a lot. That's all I Yeah, I do say. like this, man. I we'll be giving like away like some that. of these on draft night, by the way. And this will actually be great for us because this will give us a lot of um, encouragement to do day two and day three of the draft for the Panthers, covering stuff like that. So, look, but, you can almost bet this is we'll do the draft party for sure, but you can bet the real draft party is going to be on – the second round where you get to yeah well it'll be the friday night so the friday so look i'll even tell you what the so the first night of the draft is on the 26th or no the 25th uh it, it's thursday the 25th. early this year right so then the second round is going to start when we would normally do the friday free-for-all so friday is going to be lit that's going to be the bigger show then we'll be uh, giving away how about this is guaranteed two draft hats given away on that friday night show um so we'll have a lot of fun all right this right now is the last call of the night hey boys it's your boy here vegas drew just calling back in you know, drew, what's talking up? about that draft a little bit you know tony you're right a little bit on that i know i kind of uh po just jabbed you a little bit with mcconkey but in the same vein, I guess, same speech, it is a, a best player available. It always has to be a best player available. But within your scope of your needs, you, you have to also weigh out what you think need is the most important. I agree. If you have, say, the, the top – sorry, my voice screaming. <laughs> if you have the top wide receiver on your board available and the top center on your board available, which one do you value more? Right. And then at that point, you're going to have to make that decision. Uh, the youngest Panthers fan here is agreeing with me. Yeah, you're going to have to I make that it. decision. And that's where um, Dan Morgan, if you, be, you become a good drafter, is if you make that choice correctly. 
saying that, oh, yeah, I hit on that second round wide receiver when I was, we had a bigger need in the center, but we passed on the center because we knew that wide receiver was going to be good. Yeah, that's a fantastic oh, call. I appreciate it. it. You have to go. I got to take care of my kid here. Uh, uh, great Peace call out. there. And you're right. Is that, that's the way we need to be thinking about it, too, is not just best player available overall because that's such a vague concept. But you've got best player. You you got your top bo- on your board at positions, so you're crossing your wide receivers off. We got them ranked one. Marvin Harrison Jr. is not going to be there. We cross him off. We cross these guys off, and then you're looking at this: is who's going to make the most immediate difference, or who is? And I feel like this: if you've got your top, say a wide receiver slips. You've got a top a center there, and you've got a top corner. I think you automatically got to say, you know what, is the center is such a position that we can affordably answer through free agency that it's time, right? Like is like you would draft at these other positions, right? So I don't know. Is that I like that the idea of top on your board. And best player available is such a subjective thing. So, like, what is the best play? Like, how do you compare a best player available at a corner versus a wide receiver? So difficult. Yeah, Lots or a to pass be rusher too. Like theoretically, a few of the better edge rushers could fall. Like in Maybe. our past one, we Maybe. took a nobody's Trump talking Robinson. about that in the mock draft though. Yeah, man. And well, and and again, be a part of it every Friday at seven p.m. during the free for all. Eventually, we get into our mock draft, and every Friday we're doing a mock draft. And I ask everyone who they want to draft, so you can dictate how that draft looks. And then I end up posting them on Twitter, uh, and, and that's what we did. We moved away from the wide receiver. Uh, I we, like went it. Got, we went and got Chop Robinson, who was a top defensive tackle prospect out of Texas, to kind of pair him. Oh, I saw a lot of people talking shit that Chop wouldn't be there. Yeah, but if he was there, that's yeah. another guy that you would that you would consider. Uh, one of those corner fells, or one of those corners. Uh, uh, or pardon me, not corner. Uh, center from uh, uh, Michigan fell, who was seen as a first round prospect, and we we drafted all those guys and drafted a linebacker. So there are options available to us on the defensive side of the football where we all agree that we have uh, a lot of holes still yet to fill. I guess the reason I kind of, um, I guess get defensive or pull back when you talk about like, Oh, we got to draft this wide receiver. I like the idea of the draft coming to you, right? Like is letting the board fall to you and you yeah. making the great pick is like, so when you talk about Puka Nakoa, Nakua, whatever, right? Is like what's so great about his story is that you did get the gym and he fell to you. You know, he wouldn't have, it would be less impressive if you picked him top seven, top 10. I think of a Terry McLaurin who was drafted in the third round. You let these guys, they fall to you, and then all of a sudden their value goes crazy. I just don't, you know, I've been covering this long enough. Don't don't fall in love too much with a position group, too much with a player. It's okay to have your crushes, but if you put all your eggs in that basket, uh, one, they likely won't get drafted. Two, they often will disappoint. You're listening to the longest running Panthers podcast out there. Uh, I thought we were going to get this done at 10, but Cody Lack wants to argue with me for once. Not me doing way, this. Not- this is you. This is you doing this, Cody. Good. Dude, you need me to fucking fight yeah. with you dude it keeps you on your toes i know I uh hey by the way shout out to sid uh this is a great show guys a little trippy but uh entertaining middle guy hey man dude we we uh we Cody. love He's we love every guy. every panther opinion is respected over here man we like the pushback we like when people disagree with us because it makes for a better discussion and this pod is for panther fans man we that's want why you're a good podcaster that's why you're a good podcaster and yeah, I'm man, I'm old like and I'm like, oh, I don't really care about the draft. That doesn't make for good podcasting. All right, guys. Um, longest running Panthers podcast wrapping up with the longest running Panthers set or segment on this show. It's our homage to Steve I Smith. I can have it. It's in my oh man. In my, well, you better yeah, get it. I, I stop toughing up, get it together. Can you play the bumper for us at least, bro? Of course. It's nice and pulls up. Ice work? up this 
middle guy. Middle guy. Yep. Ice up. And I need it to oh, work. White Chocolate Express. Ice up, son. Ice up. Shimyard's Ice- lagging a little bit tonight. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, longest running Panthers podcast with the longest running segment. It's our time where we tell someone to ice up, toughen up, get it together. It does not have to uh, only be football related. It could be anything. Uh, we've iced up ourselves. We've iced up children in Oklahoma. Uh, we've iced up uh, pretty much everything is fair game. CK, how about this? Do you got an ice up pick? I feel like you should just do Great Wolf Lodge prices. That oh, dude, that's exactly what I was gonna do. Well, you're reading it. my mind. So uh, this past week, I went down to Charlotte, went to Great Wolf Lodge uh, for the first time. Uh, took my son. Uh, we were the family, but my son was really the only one uh, enjoying the festivities uh, as a seven year old. Um, and it was number one. The price to stay there is just ridiculous um i really thought you go there and it's just going to be this incredible experience and a lot of people may love it but for the price it is just ridiculous i don't know if anybody's had an opportunity to do this um it was like 400 a night for the room which does include access to the you know uh the water park and what have you but everything else costs money and it's like it's ridiculous the food is so expensive and it's bought like it's not even it's less than average food um and so it is absolutely um in my opinion it is just not worth it uh my son had fun doing the water park we have a water park an hour away that doesn't require us to go stay somewhere um and then you know have all this other stuff so um would not recommend uh, personally, but uh, I'm gonna ice up them and their uh, ridiculous prices. CK, are you how far away are you from Bush Gardens? Um, about the same from Charlotte, about three and a half hours. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, uh, I I recommend. Uh, here's what my suggestion for you guys on the money tip when you go to these places: if you go to Bush Gardens, you can get the meal pass where you pay like thirty five bucks and you can get like unlimited meals but you're like one an hour doubt it now so what we do is this is we just buy one meal and like we eat every hour and a half and like everybody just picks like one and like we all pick off of it oh my because God. you don't ever want to spend 40 bucks and get the ribs and then have to walk no. around bush gardens all day no right so we just eat fr- small and frequently that's a no. good way to do it um on top of that, uh, all right, Cody, you got one for me? Yeah, I do. I just found one. So, uh, all right, chat. Uh, how many bones <laughs> did you think this guy broke in his legs? Oh, God. Because that's what we love to do here uh, during I watch it. Yeah, you are. Wait, let, me t- let me take down the comment. All right. All right, how many bones, chat? Oh, 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 dude. I don't All think right. it's how many bones. I think it's just shattered. Just yeah. shattered. Just femur. <laughs> oh, dude. Just shattered. Uh, one more time. <laughs> like, what was he thinking? What was he thinking? Oh, that dude so, is not a biker. If he know, you don't come down on your mm. roll it. You got to roll. Um, Okay, uh, I got a couple for us. Kind of right, yeah. do yours. Kev sent me okay. one. All right, so uh, thinks I'm his personal ice up pick. All so, right, so my ice up pick goes to A B this week. Oh, uh, good. I know, but look, it's for admitting that you don't do your Twitter account. Uh, Demar Hamlin said this. Uh, uh, Demar Hamlin hit him up on Twitter. You just DM me on Monday. Guess you play in lame games on Twitter with my situation because I ain't DM you back. I pray God don't ever let me turn into a burnt out old head like you. I used to look up to you. Damn near shit. Sad for real, for real. Talk about a clone being the real AB back. Uh, I was really dissing. My ice up goes up to AB confirming what we probably believed. And you guys, I mean, this is 
Tell me if I'm wrong. Somebody run my Twitter. Fuck in this entertainment. I'll leave your ass sleep in a field for real, boy. You don't know me like that. My therapist told me you NFL blah self esteem week. I'm always looking down. Doesn't that imply that he doesn't run his Twitter? It's exactly what it means. Okay. Uh, so I'm icing up a B because I've been really first is like, I probably believe he wrote this one. Um, I, did you see the story about, uh, the Siamese twins that got married to the single guy? No, no. Okay. Go ahead. You pull it. You, uh, go ahead. Pull up Kev's. I'll show you this. Cause it's not really. uh, Kev, if you're listening, you're going to have to screenshot it and send it to me because it wants me to join this group thing. I don't know what the fuck that is. So I can't see it. Um, so, all right. Well, this, you know, uh, do you know AB is all into blowjobs? Like, that is his... Dude, who's not into blowjobs? Yeah, but, like, talking about Oh, by the way, uh, bad timing. Uh, your mom's checking in on you. Oh, no. Mom, you gotta <laughs> leave. You gotta leave. As you started talking about uh, it, I see you, Mom, in the chat, dude. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, AB has been just over the top on this when it was national steak, and you know what day he was like, I got the steak. Uh, so this story had emerged, um, and I learned of it because the stupid AB is a kid. Well, not stupid. So this, in which I don't even find it that funny, or I don't really care, but this has been flying around the internet. Um, that this part that this guy married these conjoined women. Oh, I did see the story. Yeah. And let's right? just say, what's the first thing that AB says? He's like, epic. You know what? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, God, never, no chill, dude. No chill. All right. Um, so, mom, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm icing those takes up. I'm not supporting those takes. How about that? And my last one I wanted to say was, th- oh, no, I got one near death one oh, for nice. us. These are my favorite. Yeah, this is, you know, these are my favorite as well. Um, Dude, you need to watch. Mom came in right at. uh, Oh God, that's so terrible. Dude, you need to. My mom has no forgiveness for any of this. She'll be like, "You better say the rosary tonight." Yeah, you better. Um. All right, check this out. Oh, Oh. look! What an asshole! That guy pushes the table out. Uh, Oh, I'm icing his friend up. Yeah, oh, that dude's rough. clearly drunk too. Look at him oh, walk around. Oh man, around. that face <laughs> plant. Oh, and then so rough. ice up the friend uh who did that. And my final ice up goes to this is pretty dang. Oh, did you see? Actually, we'll kind of double this up. I saw this. This is pretty bananas right here to me. Oh, oh I just found another one that's so Skip brutal. Bayless's show is averaging. Undisputed is averaging fewer than 50,000 viewers an episode on a Dang. national sports network. That's wild to me. Did you see that he challenged uh, Cam Newton to a three point contest? I know, and Cam, it's so and Cam wild. Newton, he ain't going to do it. No, he won't do it. Especially uh, with the- I thought to this is that with that platform, and he's making millions and millions of dollars. This is how the internet has disrupted all of this mess. Well, yeah, and you know what I was about to say, man? Like people are understanding now that he's only as good as the person across from him. Like and, no, and, he and, was and good a, 15 years ago, but it's just yeah, worn but he's off. not it's just he's tired. Not it's just tired. His own. It, he's not he's not uh for example, what whatever you say about Colin Cowherd. That dude can do a show on his own, but he's a radio and, and he's guy. Done it for years, but that's he's a radio saying. guy. People like Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, they are literally only as good as the guy across. From I him. don't. I don't think it's just that. I mean, I think that's part of it, Cody. I think a lot of it just has to do with we don't watch ESPN and Fox Sports anymore. 
You know, like uh, yeah, if I yeah, run across on. Undisputed, it's on clips on X. It's not or on TikTok or something. It's not because the only time I watch ESPN is when I'm like at the get my oil changed. You know, and it just happens to be up there. It's just out of convenience, not out of I don't go and go like go to ESPN to check for sports news. So that's it. Um, all right, put your last death near death ice up and let's get the heck out of here. Oh, uh, dude, that's f- all right. I mean, I guess this isn't too is bad. This to Kev's? Yeah, I'll show you, <laughs> dude. My okay. mom says better content. Oh, well, dude, it's certainly not content to show to your mom. Mom, look away. So, you want me to show it? You want to yeah. see it? Yeah. All right, yeah, 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 all right. So, uh, the title is a local bar has a live feed so people on the street can see the band performing inside. Okay. This was on it at 2 a.m. after they closed. No. Is that a part? Is that a person? Please say it's a person. Yeah, it's two okay. people. They're going at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought it looked like a dog. It was like... <laughs> Apparently, it's downtown Charleston. So, yeah, make sure you're not uh, live broadcasting. Uh... Hey, right. then we want to go to the. Oh, never mind. Mom, love you. Uh, <laughs> that's the C3 Panthers podcast brought to you by Carolina Cat Chronicles.com. We'll be here uh, Friday night. Um, with uh, the Friday free for all back here on Tuesday. And things will start picking up here as the draft approaches. OTAs on the way. Cody Lack, take us out of here, my man. Yes, sir. C3 Panther Nation. You already know what we do. Like that bar in Charleston. Keep pounding. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill.